Hi everyone and welcome to my pre-Olympic Q&A. I'm definitely going to vlog the Olympics. I have worked so hard to get there and I'm so excited. So I wanted to start now and then hopefully I'll vlog the whole experience and then also maybe do a post Q&A afterwards. So I asked on Twitter and Instagram for some questions and I'll just get straight in. So the first one is, since family can't go, what souvenir are you bringing back for your mum? So I haven't planned a souvenir, like an exact one, but I'll definitely be in that shop on FaceTime to her, getting anything that she wants. Um, it really does sadden me that she won't be there. She's been a huge part of this journey and I wouldn't have made it to the Olympics without her. So um, to not have her in the audience really does break my heart, but I'll bring her back a piece of Tokyo for sure. And um, yeah, I'll make sure she gets to choose it. I'll be on FaceTime in the shop. Um, yeah, so definitely be getting her something. I'll be in that shop. I'll be getting loads of gifts for everyone. Okay, next question. What effect will the absence of fans in the stands have on you? I wish I could be there screaming my head off for you. I guess I'll be cheering loudly from home. Hope my neighbors don't mind. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, the absence of fans is really, really sad as well. I think when you think of the Olympics, you think of packed out stadiums, you think of cheering fans. And um, I am someone that does love a full audience to perform to. So yeah, again, it is heartbreaking and um, I wish it could be another way, but it can't. So I am just mostly grateful that it's going ahead. And I think if you ask other athletes that are going, it's just, obviously it was kind of hanging the balance at, at one point and kind of, even as we got closer and closer, it still did seem like it was up in the air. So I'm just really grateful that it is going ahead, that at the end of the day, I'll get to call myself an Olympian. And obviously during this pandemic, we've just got to be as safe as possible. So I think it's going to be hard. It's going to be slightly harder to bring that atmosphere, but I hope that um, amongst us gymnasts, coaches, and whoever else is allowed to be in there, that we can bring a good atmosphere. And I'm sure that organizers will try their best as well. Okay, next question. What precautions are you taking to stay COVID free, especially in the light of the news from the Dutch team? Um, I mean, there's nothing that us athletes can do more than other human beings. So obviously social distancing, wearing masks um, and a lot of washing hands and hand sanitizing. Um, the girls that I train with have been really good. They're mostly all still in school. So when there's been any sort of outbreaks at their schools, they've not come in to kind of be as safe as they can be and um, protect me and my coach which are traveling to Tokyo so shout out to them they um, have been really good teammates this whole time and um, obviously I have to get somewhat close to them but they are really good at keeping their distance um, and same with like any friends and family everyone's done their best to make sure um, they've kept me as safe as possible and people taking additional tests if I am going to see them um, so yeah just the usual and having good friends and family and teammates that are also doing their best as well. Um, what luxuries are you taking with you? Who will you miss most? What would you like to achieve? What's next after Tokyo? Okay, lots of questions there. So what luxuries are you taking with you? Um, I'm not 100% sure what you mean by luxuries. Um, so I guess I'll probably take some snacks, although there will be a lot of food available, so I won't go overboard on the snacks. Um, and I'll have my laptop and my Kindles to keep myself entertained because I feel like we're pretty much in lockdown when we're there. Um, I'll be taking my massage pillow. Um, it's just like a little pillow that has massages in it that's heated and I use it pretty much every day just to help my body and just, yeah. I can't really think of anything specific that would be like a luxury item. I won't be taking sort of designer bags or anything with me. That's what I think of when I think of luxury. Um, I'll just be wearing my Puma Jamaica kit the whole time. So that'll be me. Okay, next part of the question, who will you miss most? I'll definitely miss my fiance, Elliot, the most. Um, yeah, again, along with my mum, it's um, sad that he won't be there to support me. Um, yeah, so those two really, I'll just kind of, they were both there cheering me on at the World Championships, the competition that got me qualified to the Olympics. Um, and I loved having them in the stands. So uh, my sister was also meant to come and watch. So I'll just miss having those people that have just supported me um, on this journey there. Um, but yeah, obviously my fiance because um, I see him the most. <laughs> I'll miss him the most and I love him. <laughs> um, okay, what was the next part of that question? 
what would you like to achieve? Well, for me, the big dream was to achieve becoming Olympian. So I was so nervous at 2019 Worlds because that was kind of the make it or break it of my dream for me. So getting to the Olympics and getting to compete is what I want and I've hoped to achieve. So um, I want to have a great performance and I want to um, make everyone proud that supported me all this way. And um, I think as for scores and results, all of those are just things that I can't control. So I just hope the things I can control go well. And um, yeah, I just want to achieve that Olympian status. Um, and also along with that, I also want to keep inspiring young Jamaican gymnasts and just kind of keep this uphill progression that we've been doing over the past few years. And then in the future, see a Jamaican gymnast achieving a medal at the Olympics. And just to know that I was kind of like a small part of that um, that got the ball rolling um, as Jamaica's second ever Olympian. Okay, next one. Um, as an athlete, how are you feeling about the public health and safety precautions being taken for the Games with COVID? Um, I feel really good. Japan has been very on it. They've had a playbook that they've sent out to all um, the teams and they've kept updating it and um, it's very long, so I've read it back to front and um, it's just rigorous and they're going to be testing us, I'm pretty sure, PCR testing us every single day we're there. As soon as we land, um, we've got to do a lot of tests next week um, before leaving. Um, yeah, obviously with the no spectators, they are really doing everything they can to be as safe as possible. Um, so I feel anxious because I just really don't want to catch it. I want to catch COVID, that is, and just I want to make it to the competition. I want to make it to Tokyo. So um but as an athlete, I feel like they're doing all they can. Um, I have had both my vaccines as well, so um, that makes me feel a bit better, but obviously you can still catch it. So I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm happy with all the playbook and everything I've seen rules-wise. A little bit complicated and a little bit overwhelming, but I do think they've done a really good job of making it as safe as possible. Okay, next one. What's been your favorite part of competing for Team Jamaica? Is there anything you miss about competing for GB? My favourite part of competing for Jamaica is, oh, there's a few things. I'd say all the fans, they're just so animated um, and they just really, what would the word be? Like really, really, all the comments and everything I see are just so passionate and just the support for um, their athletes um, is just amazing. I think they're really, really excited to be breaking into new sports. So a lot of the time it's like, oh my gosh, Jamaica has um, a gymnast. And yeah, that's so exciting to me. So just the support of the fans. And um, for me as well, not having a close relationship with my dad, it's allowed me to really um, get in touch with my Jamaican side. So I really, really love that. And also on our trips, obviously I will be alone um, in at the Olympics, but previous trips with the other Jamaican gymnasts, we get into some serious UNO games. And those have been some highlights of lots of my trips. Like we get so competitive but we are crying with laughter every single time we play. So I'll miss the gang and the UNO games for sure. <laughs> um, and as for the second part of that question, um, there isn't anything that I specifically miss about competing for Great Britain. And I don't say that to throw any shade. Like I had great experiences um, and I, I did enjoy a lot of my time with GB, but um, I think I just see them as such different chapters, they're almost incomparable, so there's just not anything that I would bring in from my time at GB into my time now. Um, so I hope that makes sense and um, no one thinks I'm trying to be shady. Um, and I'm also just so grateful to GB for making lifelong friends. Um, so yeah, nothing that I miss, but lots that I am grateful for. Okay, so... What gave the idea of your signature beam dismount? It's such a wow skill to watch. Thank you so much. Um, and all props go to Randy Lane. So Randy was the assistant coach on the UCLA team when I was there. And I could do the sideways side aerial, but didn't compete it. Um, it's just a bit risky as a skill on its own. And that was freshman year. As When I got there, I just kind of showed them all the skills I could do. And then going into sophomore year, Randy um, had kind of come up with this idea and he wanted me to try it. So I was like, I'm up for the challenge, just sort of took it as a bit of a game, bit of a challenge. And then when I could do it, I kind of kept practicing it every day. And then it was like, okay, well, we're on to circuits and it's still at the end of my circuit. And then we're on to routine. And they were like, yeah, we'll just do that dismount at the end of your routine. 
Um, and then it got to meet the Bruins and it was still in my routine. So yeah, it just kind of evolved like that. And then since then, it's just become such a signature part of my routine. And then, yeah, I just love it now. And I think um, it's quite cool to have the hard part of your dismount as a skill on the beam, as opposed to obviously everyone else usually does the, the round off or the flicks and then the hard dismount. So, and obviously being sideways as well. I am very proud of it. Uh, so shout out to Randy. <laughs> um, okay, there's a quite a few questions that kind of go off topic from Olympics. So I'm going to try and stick to the ones that stay on Olympics. So have you designed your Leos for Tokyo yourself? Who sewed them? So Jamaica, we were with Alpha Factor. Um, I'm not 100% sure what happened, but um, I think Alpha Factor is, is no longer. Um, so just literally a few weeks ago, I kind of found that out. And then um, on that same day, they were like, oh, we need designs. So I think they wanted the designs to send out to different um, companies. So it was all a bit of a rush. And on that day, I personally had no time. So I was like, oh my gosh, what should I do? So I sent a tweet out and I was like um, asking people if they would want to try and design a Jamaican leotard. And lots of amazingly creative um, gymnastics fans sent me some amazing designs and I'm so happy I did it because the designs you guys came up with were so much better than anything I could have come up with. So sent those to the president of Jamaican Gymnastics and she really liked them as well. I sent five off, um, I couldn't choose between them five. Um, so I just sent them to her and was kind of like, I'll let her choose and, or whoever's gonna make the leotards choose. So now we are with Quattro um, who makes leotards and they have, they narrowed it down to two and I'm not sure what the process was, but obviously they've only had sort of two weeks to make these leotards. So I haven't received them yet, but um, I've seen the final designs and I've seen photos, they have been made and they're in the mail on the way to me now. So um, they're not exactly as the fans designed them. Obviously Quattro hasn't had long at all, so they've done um, their best of what they were given, but I think they look stunning and I'm really excited to show you. Um, so yeah, comment down below if you want to see sort of a leotard reveal video, I will definitely do that. Um, yeah, and thank you so much to Quattro because I'm really excited about these leotards and thank you so much to everyone who sent a design. There was honestly so many. Um, but I think it will be, um, yeah, just as excited as I am about the final designs. Okay, let's go for the next question. What is your goal from the Olympics? I kind of covered that already. So just to, um, yeah, just enjoy myself is actually the main goal. Um, I don't want to put too much stress on myself. And I mean, without sounding defeatist, I am there as a participant. My goal was to become an Olympian to participate. I know my standard, I know my potential. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to be able to enjoy it because it's, there's not really medals on the line for me. Um, if I was to sort of miraculously make a final, then obviously that would be a huge bonus of an achievement, but I know my standard, I know where I'm at in sort of the ranking. So yeah, just to participate, to enjoy it and to show off um, what Jamaica's capable of. So yeah, to fly that flag. Okay, so fashion updates, plans to bring NCAA meets gym stars, Olympic spirit, nooshness to the floor since there will be no fans. So fashion updates, I got a massive box of Puma gear and that was one of the most exciting days that like, kind of so far in my Olympic prep. Um, obviously, um, it's, I would say overall there's like this anxious feeling of just trying not to get COVID and also we know the Japanese public is kind of like anti-Olympic, so you, there is a lot of negativity still, so that there is an anxiety that's come along with this process. So that day was a really happy, exciting day for me. To, I received this huge box, FaceTime my mum, we kind of went through it all together, and like on the seams, it has like Tokyo 2020, and it has like Jamaica in Japanese writing, and it's all bright yellow and bright green, and oh, it's just so cool, and just seeing the Olympic rings on all of it, yeah, it was like a pinch me moment. It's like, oh my gosh, my dream is actually coming true. So yeah, getting my Olympic kit was amazing. And yeah, also comment down below. I could go through my gear and my leotards in the same video. If you'd want to see that, let me know. Um, as for the second part of that question, plans to bring NCA meets gym stars, Olympic spirit, nooshness to the floor since there'll be no fans. Yeah, I mean, I haven't planned it. That sort of vibe, that nooshness, as you call it, which I love. I don't plan it just it just happens yeah so 
Um, obviously there's a few, um, well, all around, I'm really happy with my subdivision. I think we've got a really great group to go around with. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of buzz having USA in our round, which is really cool. Obviously Michaela Skinner was an NCAA gymnast. And then we've got um, Jordan, a future Bruin. So hopefully between the lot of us, we can bring the vibes. And I'm really happy with my mixed group as well. I think um, as the week progresses and we train together, we'll get a nice bond going and we'll kind of know um, where each other wants to be cheered for and kind of know each other's routine. So I think, yeah, I think we'll be able to bring some good vibes, definitely. Okay, a couple more questions. So how do you mentally prepare yourself before a competition also do you ever use visualization techniques um yes i definitely visualize um every night before going to sleep so at the moment for the past few weeks i've visualized myself doing my routines and then once i get to see the competition venue i'll try to get really specific with my visualization even try and visualize myself in my leotard and in the venue and yeah just try to make it as specific as i can um and as for sort of other mental preparations, nothing else sort of on the build up, um, but on the day, just like trying to breathe out those negative thoughts and like when you get butterflies, I try and visualize myself breathing those out. Um, so yeah, definitely just visualization all the way. Um, and yeah, breathing. And also I just try to be in a good mood that day and just keep high spirits. I think it's easy. Um, if you are in a bad mood, then things just tend to go wrong, so. Yeah. Okay. How nervous are you? So at the moment, I wouldn't say I'm particularly nervous for the competition. I'm someone that kind of gets nervous the day before, day of. Um, but I am just anxious, like I've mentioned a few times, kind of just to not get COVID. Once I've had my tests done next week and they all come back negative, get on that plane, land, take my test and it's negative and I get in the village, I hope that that anxiety can lift a bit. And obviously then I've still got to kind of be really sensible because we are um, getting tested every day, but I'm sure everyone's in the same boat. We all want to do our competition. So everyone's going to be sensible and following the rules. So fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the only thing I'm nervous about at the moment. Um, but I definitely will be nervous on the day. I think when you care about something because you've worked so hard for it, nerves are just natural. Um, and I do love the, the adrenaline that comes with them because then I can bounce a bit higher and everything feels a bit easier. Okay, I think that is probably all of the sort of Tokyo based questions. So, oh, no, nope, sorry, I lied. There's a couple more. So, oh, along with that fashion one, which was from Gymcastic, they added Leo's hair warm ups accessories. So I've spoke about the leotards, um, let me know again if you want to see them all and the um, the training leotards as well. So as for hair, obviously some of you might remember me as a super blonde in my NCA days. And um, I got my hair done uh, last week or the week before. So, you know, more of a sophisticated look now, <laughs> but still very curly and a nice big ponytail for sure. Um, and then accessories. Got some cool hats from Puma, so I'll show you those again if I do um, a video showing you my gear. Um, no, I don't have any other accessories though. And let's see, was it always the plan to try for the Olympics after NCAA? If not, what made you decide? No, it definitely wasn't. Um, growing up, I always thought 2012 was my only shot. And then when 2015, 2016 came around, I was like, well, I've got another shot but it still wasn't like, I'm gonna keep going until I make this happen. So yeah, 2021 wasn't in my plans at all. And I was retired, it just felt natural to graduate, retire, that's what everyone does. Um, and I was back from college in the UK for about a year. I was in and out of my gym, just coaching some private sessions. And there was one week in particular where loads of people, just some of the people that worked at the gym were just asking me about a comeback. And I was like, I literally haven't done gymnastics in a year. Like barely even had gone to the gym. Like I did a bit of abs and a bit of um, cardio, but like nowhere near elite training. And um, then I just started to think about it more and more. And I was like, well, why not? Like you still would love to achieve that dream. There was nothing stopping me. I love my gym, my coaches. Um, I didn't have any sort of terrible injuries that were lingering. So I kind of just thought about it 
really hard and took it seriously um, for a week, just really pondering on it. Spoke to my mum about it, but she really was like, it's your decision. Obviously, that would mean um, you'd need to move to be closer to your gym. Um, you'd also have to figure out kind of like working alongside training. So definitely weighed up the pros and cons. And the main pro for me was that I was, if I did go for it, I wasn't going to ever be able to look back and have regrets. And I kind of also took a bit of inspiration from Nastia Lukin going for 2012. And um, to be at the pinnacle of your sport, Olympic champion, and to kind of then also go for it again. And I don't know if she had the same mindset as in not having regrets as I have, but just to see her go through that and try, and now she can never look back and think, what if? And that really inspired me. So I thought if she can do that, and she's a Nastia Lukin Olympic champion, and not fear the failure of, the embarrassment maybe, I don't know if that's the right word, but that's kind of how I looked at it, of not making it, um, then I can definitely do it too. Okay, last final question from my good friend Luke Carson. So he says, how excited are you to see your dear old friend Luke in Tokyo? We can blast Tokyo Drift Song. So Luke is Reese from Ireland's um, coach, and yeah, we've had loads of trips together in the past when he was a gymnast, and um, obviously I've crossed paths with him as a coach as well. And yes, Luke, I am very excited to see you there. We will make some good memories like we have on past trips. And yes, we will blast the Tokyo Drift song. Um, and I'm gonna vlog when I'm out there. So let's get Luke into my vlog when I'm out there. Um, thank you so much for all your questions. I hope um, I've answered them. And yeah, let me know what else you wanna see. I definitely am gonna vlog when I'm out there, like I've said, um, yeah. Let me know what you want to see. I would love to try and get loads of people in my vlogs. Obviously, social distancing and stuff. Um, Usain Bolt, I think, is going to be out there. So if I can get him into a vlog, that would be insane. But if not, <laughs> never mind. Because that is quite quite, quite a high um, goal there. But yes, I will leave this here. Thank you so much for everyone's support. Thank you for your questions. And yeah, maybe the next time I am taking a YouTube video will be in Tokyo. So keep everything crossed. And thank you for watching. Mwah.